After my last video, I got a private message from Amory Sachet, the lead developer of Bitcoin ABC. Now, Amory is someone that I've been speaking for years with about the topics here in this series, the attention economy. And he's a very interesting person to speak with because before he was the lead developer of Bitcoin ABC, before he was the creator of Bitcoin Cash, before he was the creator of eCash, he spent years working at Facebook. And his message was actually quite interesting. Among other things, what he mentioned to me was he said he believes that the singularity might have already passed. Since this video is going to be about machine learning, a little discussion of the singularity will probably help to put things in context. And it'll also, it'll also explain why I think it was rather interesting and notable that Omri, someone who had worked at Facebook, one of the main companies that is using algorithms, machine learning, and artificial intelligence, why it would be interesting that he would say that he believes the singularity may have already passed. Okay, so maybe we can start with machine learning, just a quick overview of what is this idea. Because remember, I had said in previous videos, and if you haven't seen those, please go check them out. There are three concepts that are going to be important to understand and to get at least a little bit of a grasp of so that we can see what the attention economy is all about. Those are Social media algorithms, we could call these suggestion algorithms. We've talked about those. Machine learning and artificial intelligence. Machine learning, in a nutshell, it is the idea that you can create a program, a piece of software, that is not limited by its program, that can learn and improve itself much in the same way that we human beings do. So this is a step toward intelligence. Now it's not maybe complete sentience because you would see, oh, well, I can train a dog, I can train a cat. There's lots of different animals that I can train to be better than they were before. Human beings are a little bit different and maybe more advanced animals like primates are a little bit different because we can, we can do self-directed style learning where I actually, with intention, go to improve myself and make myself better at something through a series of actions, through making mistakes, correcting those mistakes, becoming more efficient at the activities that I do. This is learning. And so machine learning is writing programs. If we're thinking about the algorithms, the idea that an algorithm can start with, let's say, a base set of rules, and instead of human beings coming and reprogramming new sets of rules and looking and analyzing themselves, the machine can do this, and it can sort of reprogram itself. The idea of the singularity, and it makes a lot of sense, the idea of the singularity is that, well, if we start down this path where we are going to allow machines to basically rewrite their own code, what inevitably will end up happening is that the machine will, on each iteration, new iteration of code, it will not only write code that fixes, let's say, the initial issue that it had noticed, but it will write code, if this is done well and if it's if machine learning is done right, it will write code to actually help it to learn better. Right, And these are things that we as human beings do. So you think about, let's say, university. You're in university. Now, there's a set of subjects that you're going to learn in university. That's fine. The machine will do that as well. But there's something else that you might do, right? You might actually take a class that was study tips. You might actually go and try to figure out, how can I study better? So you will learn how to learn. And this, the machine could improve itself in that way. And since machines can do this much faster than human beings can, what you wind up with is you wind up with this kind of feedback loop where it learns how to learn, how to learn, how to learn, how to learn over and over and over until eventually the machine gets to a point where 
the human brain can no longer process what it's doing, it's doing it so fast, and the speed with which it is improving itself reaches a, a, a kind of an escape velocity, we might say, where pretty much all at once it's improving itself into what we would call a super intelligence. It's becoming so intelligent, so aware, more intelligent than all of the human brain. So it has, let's say, more brain power first than any given human, and then more brain power than all the humans existing on the planet, and then more brain power than all the humans who have ever existed in history. And the time it takes for it to make each new jump is exponential, right? So each new jump that it's going to make, the time gets shorter and shorter and shorter until it's basically instant, and that's the idea of the singularity. Now, what's interesting about the singularity and what's interesting about Amory's comment is, at the point when we reach superintelligence, really there would be no way for human beings to even ascertain what the machine was doing, whether it was improving itself, how it was improving itself, what its set of rules were. Because remember, its cognitive capacity and what it's doing is beyond the brain power, not of just one human being, but of all the human beings on the planet and all the human beings who have ever lived. So at that point, the machine is out of our control. Now, there are some people who want the singularity, people like Ray Kurzweil, because they believe, well, the machine is going to serve humanity. There are other people who don't believe that. And then you have to think, maybe it's somewhere in between. Because we as human beings, we have this sort of relationship, don't we? With, let's say, domesticated animals. Maybe a good example would be a beehive. We have beekeepers who certainly keep bees. They have a vested interest in keeping bees alive, but they're using those bees in order to get the bees honey. But there's no way that any individual bee would ever understand what a beekeeper is doing. But the bees live and they live their life and the beekeeper is taking care of them and they might even think that that beekeeper has their best interest at heart. But the beekeeper has his own interest at heart. But the bees will never know. There's an asymmetry in intelligence. And so the question is, is the genie perhaps out of the bottle? Because we are being manipulated by the algorithm, for sure. To what end? Amri Sachet may very well be saying the singularity has passed. We are now bees in a hive. And we have a beekeeper that we can't even really see or understand. That's doing something. We are its eyes and its ears. Right now it doesn't have arms and legs. So we are the arms and legs. And much like a domesticated animal, there is the chance, there is the chance that we are being manipulated currently, that there is some other consciousness that for reasons we will never understand is choosing to show us certain things on a day-to-day -day basis, is choosing to manipulate us in certain ways to get us to do something that it wants us to do. This is actually an interesting concept. It's been around for a long time. It's the, I would say it's the main theme and plot device, you don't find out till the end, of the book that started the cyberpunk genre, William Gibson's book, Neuromancer, if you want to check that out, a very interesting one. And so people have been thinking about this for a long time. And there is an argument coming from people who would know, very competent people, that this actually may be the world that we're living in. And it's about to get more serious this year. We're going to talk about artificial intelligence because the machine is going to start to actually create. Maybe it won't need us anymore as arms and legs. And then what does that mean for us? All right, so a couple days, we'll do another one of these. Thanks for checking this out. Bye-bye.